Welcome to Stellar Insights. Um, you know all those incredible lunar modules that took astronauts to the surface of the moon? What happened to them after they completed their missions? Well, it turns out those amazing vehicles had a variety of fates, some pretty surprising. You know, it really makes you think. We're going to take a deep dive into the journeys of these engineering marvels, the very same ones that helped make history. To really appreciate their different destinies, though, we need to remember that each lunar module, or LM, had two main components. Right, the descent stage. Yes. The descent stage was responsible for that really tricky, controlled landing on the moon. And then you have the ascent stage. That's the one that carried those astronauts back up to lunar orbit to reunite with the command module. So, so much to think about, right? You need mm -hmm. to really understand that two-part design that's crucial to grasping how and why their fates ended up being so different. I think that is a great place to start our deep dive. Okay, so let's begin with those descent stages. You know, from the six Apollo missions that successfully landed on the moon between 1969 and 1972. Right. So those descent stages, they were essentially left behind on the lunar surface. They're still there. They're like permanent fixtures now. Yeah. Marking those historic landing sites. And they are still visible today. Yeah. And you know what? High resolution images that were captured by NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, they don't just show the modules themselves. They show the tracks from the lunar rovers and even the footprints left behind by those astronauts. It's amazing to think about. Those images provide a powerful visual reminder of of humanity's presence on another celestial body. I know, it really is amazing. You know what, they stand as these silent monuments to human achievement. And think about it, they're also really valuable artifacts for us to study in the future. Who knows what we might learn from them? Okay, so the descent stages, they stayed on the moon, but the ascent stages had a much more uh, varied and complex set of fates. Very true. Like Apollo 10's ascent stage, nicknamed Snoopy. Oh yeah, that one was unique. It didn't crash into the moon, it was sent into a heliocentric orbit around the sun. It's the only flown ascent stage that we know of to have survived intact. That's right. It's still out there. Yeah. And because it survived, it's like a unique opportunity for us to study. I mean, imagine if we could examine its condition and get that data it might still have. Right. We could glean invaluable insights into how the space environment affects spacecraft over really long periods of time. It would be like opening a time capsule from the Apollo era. Now let's compare Snoopy's journey with that of Apollo 13's LM, Aquarius. Oh, Aquarius. Yeah. Right. That was the one intended for a lunar landing. But uh, it became a critical lifeboat for the crew after that oxygen tank explosion. And that particular ascent stage ended up burning up when it re-entered the Earth's atmosphere. Apollo 13. It's a stark reminder of the risks and challenges that come with space travel and the incredible resourcefulness and resilience of that crew. Absolutely. They use that lunar module, something designed for going down to the moon and back up as a lifeline to get back home to Earth. Incredible. Uh, so we've got one ascent stage out there in solar orbit and another one burned up in Earth's atmosphere. Right. And it doesn't stop there. The ascent stages from Apollo 14, 15, and 17, they were intentionally crashed into the moon. Yeah, at very specific coordinates, too. And they weren't just crashing them for fun. They were carefully orchestrated to create artificial moonquakes. Exactly. And scientists used seismometers left on the moon from those earlier missions to study those seismic waves. So even in their destruction, these lunar modules were advancing scientific knowledge. It's amazing. It is. It is. That data gave us critical information about the interior of the moon, the different layers, densities, you name it. But now let's talk about those remaining ascent stages, the ones with a bit more mystery surrounding them, like Apollo 11's Eagle. The ascent stage that brought Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin back from that very first lunar landing. Well, you know, initially we all thought that Eagle crashed on the moon, right, shortly after it was jettisoned. But recent analysis suggests it might still be up there, orbiting the moon. Imagine that eagle, the vehicle that carried the first humans to walk on the moon, silently circling the moon all these years. We don't have definite proof, but it's certainly a very interesting idea. Absolutely. It really is. You know, we've been talking a lot about the lunar modules that landed on the moon, but it's really important to remember that several missions were all about testing, you know, testing the lunar module and its systems in space before even attempting a landing. Right, because those missions, they gave us so much data. They helped refine the technology that, in the end, 
made it possible for us to actually set foot on the moon. It's like each mission was a stepping stone, bringing us closer to that big goal of landing on the moon. Exactly. They were critical. So um, I think it would be good to talk a little bit about those missions, the ones that focused on getting that lunar module ready for its role in landing humans on the moon. Like, uh, let's start with Apollo 5. Apollo 5. That was an uncrewed mission, right? Launched back in 1968. That's right, 1968. And its main goal was to test the lunar modules, uh, you know, the descent and ascent propulsion systems, all while in Earth's orbit. So essentially, this lunar module was taking a test drive around Earth, mm. but without any astronauts on board. Exactly. It was all about making sure the LM could handle those really important maneuvers, you know, safely and reliably. And, um, well, both the ascent and descent stages of Apollo 5's lunar module ended up re-entering Earth's atmosphere separately, and they burned up. That was a planned outcome, right? I mean, for a lot of these early lunar modules that were used just for testing. It was. And, you know, it's a good reminder that those early missions, they weren't always about getting things perfect. They were also about learning from what didn't work. It makes you realize that even the lunar modules that never reached the moon played an important role in the grand scheme of things. Their purpose was testing and refining the technology, which ultimately paved the way for those later missions that did achieve that incredible feat of landing on the moon. I completely agree. So um, how about we talk about Apollo 9 next? It launched a year later in 1969, and this one was crewed. Okay, Apollo 9. This one was all about testing the lunar module in Earth orbit, but with a crew on board. Yeah. And it was a much more expensive test. The astronauts, James M. Divot, David Scott, and Russell Schweikart, spent 10 days in space. Yeah. 10 days. Just putting that lunar module through all sorts of tests. 10 days in space, orbiting Earth, testing out a lunar module. Yeah. That must have been quite the experience. I bet it gave them a lot of valuable insight into how the spacecraft would perform in the actual lunar environment. Absolutely. They did things like a separation and docking maneuver, you know, to simulate what would actually happen during a lunar mission. And uh, they also tested the lunar module's descent engine. They really put it through its paces, making sure it could change orbits. So Apollo 9 really pushed the limits, testing the capabilities of that lunar module in a simulated lunar environment. It's incredible to think about all that went into these missions to make sure everything would work perfectly when they did attempt a lunar landing. But what about missions that went beyond Earth orbit, like Apollo 10? Right, Apollo 10. That one was launched in May of 69. It was basically a dress rehearsal for that very first moon landing. The astronauts on board, Thomas Stafford, John Young, and Eugene Cernan. They took the lunar module, nicknamed Snoopy, to lunar orbit, and they came within eight nautical miles of the moon's surface. Eight nautical miles? I can't even imagine. They practiced all those maneuvers, undocking, descent, ascent, rendezvous, all of it. They were so close. It's incredible to think they were so close to achieving what no human had ever done before. It's truly amazing that they didn't actually land. But that mission really set the stage for Apollo 11, which was just two months later. Speaking of Apollo 11, I think we should go back to its ascent stage, Eagle, for a minute. Yeah. Eagle was the one that carried Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin back from the moon. We always thought it crashed after it finished its job. But some recent analyses suggest it might actually still be in lunar orbit. I mean, can you imagine if we could find it after all these years? Right. Like unearthing a piece of history. It would be an incredible scientific opportunity. We could learn so much about how the lunar environment affects spacecraft over time. It would be amazing. It really shows how incredible the legacy of the Apollo program is. Even after all these years, the lunar modules are still captivating our imaginations. And they can still be scientifically valuable. Absolutely. They are a constant reminder of what humans can achieve and the incredible engineering and ingenuity that went into those missions. It really is amazing to think about how these lunar modules, they still fascinate us all these years later, decades after their missions ended. They represent such an important moment in history, a time when we really push the boundaries of innovation and exploration. I think you're right. Each lunar module, whether it landed on the moon or just helped us test and learn, played a vital role in pushing our understanding of space exploration further. They are a real, tangible reminder of human ingenuity and determination, you know, forever linked to one of humanity's most remarkable achievements. Absolutely. Let's dive a little deeper into those lunar modules that actually made it to the lunar surface, starting with Apollo 11's Eagle, you know, the one that carried Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin to take those first steps on the moon. Its descent stage is still up there on the moon in the sea of tranquility, a lasting reminder of that incredible moment. 
it really is more than just a discarded piece of equipment, you know? Eagle's descent stage, it's a silent sentinel. It's a testament to how ambitious we can be as humans, and it's a symbol of our very first trip beyond Earth. A real inspiration for future explorers, wouldn't you say? Yeah. A reminder what we can achieve when we set our minds to something that seems impossible. I think so. I think so. It's pretty powerful. And while the descent stage of Eagle remains on the moon, the fate of its ascent stage, well, that's still a mystery. The possibility that it might still be in lunar orbit really makes you think. It does. And then you have the ascent stages from Apollo 12, 14, 15, and 17. They met a very different end. They were intentionally crashed into the moon at very specific locations. Right, to create those artificial moonquakes we talked about earlier. Exactly. And even though they were destroyed, those lunar modules gave us important information about the moon's interior. It's really quite ingenious. The scientists and engineers behind the Apollo program they found a way to get even more valuable data from those lunar modules, even after they had finished their main missions. They were determined to learn as much as they could, every opportunity, every piece of equipment. They wanted to use it all to advance our understanding of the moon in space. And then we have Apollo 16's ascent stage. It was left in lunar orbit, but uh, it lost control. It ended up crashing somewhere on the moon. We still don't know exactly where it landed which just adds another layer of mystery to these stories, doesn't it? It really does. As we come to the end of our deep dive into the fates of these incredible Apollo lunar modules, I am left with a sense of awe. These machines, they represent so much more than technological advancements. They are enduring symbols of human ambition, our ingenuity, that constant pursuit of knowledge that drives us. They are. And their stories, full of success and challenges, they continue to inspire. They remind us that the possibilities are endless. As we continue to explore the cosmos, the legacy of these Apollo lunar modules will undoubtedly continue to shape our understanding of space exploration for many generations to come.